It's the way you make these choices that you create the world that you see around you. So let me show you how squaring works. Now this is a little tricky. You see, this is a, a, a curve. I mean, I'm sorry, it's a coordinate system of axes. How many of you remember coordinate systems in school? This is, we're, gonna, we're now going to look at possibilities and probabilities. So here is, what do you think this is? First of all, notice that it goes plus and minus, plus and minus. It's a wave. It may be a photon, but it may not be a photon. It could be an electron. It could be anything. But it's a wave of possibility. Why is it a wave of possibility? Because it has both plus and minus. It's waving. It's going up and down. It's going positive and negative. That's the quality that waves have. That's why when they add together, they can interfere with each other. Do you understand that? You don't understand that this goes up and down? OK, look. This is time going this way. OK? Now, watch me. Watch my arm. It's up. It's down. It's up. It's down. My hand. Now, just if, if you could just turn off all the lights and it was just a little light on the tip of my finger. Can you imagine that? Just a little light right there. And you would see that little light. What you would see is what you see on the screen. My hand is describing a wave going up and down. Positive, negative. Positive, negative. You got it? Do you understand that? Good. Ooh. That was hard. OK, now let's go on. Here is what happens when you square. You see, this curve represents, this is what happened on Sunday. This is Monday. This is Tuesday. This is Wednesday, Thursday. Friday, it went down again. This week, it was, it was all negative, bad market on, on that, that week. This week, it was all. So each of these represents the value of the market at a given day, OK? Got it? Now, that's possibility wave. That's what happens when you square. When you square, there are no negatives anymore. Let me show you what that looks like. See, here is the red line represents the wave. But notice when I square every point on this line, when it's positive, I just get a bigger value. When I square every point on this line, I get a positive value, because minus times minus is positive. So this represents all these positive humps are probabilities. They're all above the line. OK? That's called squaring. Do you understand? Think about it. I'm going to go on. Here's another curve. OK? And now here's the double slit experiment that you just saw. Here, positive and negative, as you saw before. Squaring produces that. We know that. Here is this curve again. And now I'm going to add another curve to it, red and blue. And I want you to watch something. See, I can move that here. And notice that now it's not quite where it was before. There's a, diff there's a distance here to move it back. This difference, this is what we call phase, the difference between one curve and the other. Don't worry about that so much. Now, if I add these two squares, first of all, let me go into something else first. How does observation change anything? Let me explain that first. Here is one possibility, squared. Now, what happens when something gets squared? You saw what happens when something gets squared. Before. It was a wave of possibilities. When something gets squared, it's positive, one or the other. It's 50-50, and then it's one or the other. That's called squaring, OK? That's what the squaring represents. 
When you see this, and you know, now from this point onward, don't worry about all that stuff, all that's math. Just remember these symbols. When you see this sign, think wave or think possibility. When you see this sign, think particle or probability. Okay? That's all you have to remember. I'll be showing this again, so don't worry about it. Now, if you add two possibilities that are out of phase with each other, like in the double slit experiment, if you add these two up, what do you think you get? You're right, nothing, zero. Cancels out, cancelado. Okay? But, here's possibility wave one. If you square that, you get this. Here's possibility two, which if you didn't square, you'd have this. If you square that, you get this. If you add up these two probabilities, you just get more probability. So adding probabilities gives you more. Adding possibilities can give you anything. So when you're working at the level of what's already out there, the material world, the world of marbles and particles, then you're dealing with the land of probability. You're dealing with what's already out there. You may not know it yet, but it's already out there. When you're dealing with the land of possibilities, where things vibrate, that's when you can create. That's the level where your creativity lies. Now, this is all very abstract, and we're going to get it down to earth very shortly, but please just bear with me for a while. I realize some of this might be difficult, but then again, gambling is something we all understand. In roulette, we have 38 slots on the roulette wheel. I know, I study roulette. There are two green, there are two green slots, okay? And there are 18 red slots and 18 black slots, okay? And you know that croupier sends the ball around and it lands somewhere. This is how the world looks to us after the mind has observed each possibility. This is what you mean by squaring and then adding. You see that the odds of getting, say, the color red is around 47%. There are a few places where the wheel, because the wheel is a little bit odd, it goes down to zero, but don't worry about that. It's mostly staying together. So when you add up a whole bunch of probabilities, you start to get something which is starting to look like a real thing. On the other hand, when you're adding things which are possible, but not probable yet, you can get them to cancel out. And when you do that, if you look at the world before you observe any possibility, you can get a wholly different possibility wave that when you square that, it gives you a very different picture. So I just want you to be acquainted with the notion. Don't worry about the details. I just want you to be acquainted with the notion that everything depends on whether you're working at the level of possibilities or at the level of probabilities. And what you need to learn and what I hope to teach you as we go on is what the difference is how you can work with that difference. So I'm just giving you the abstraction first, and then we'll go into some examples. Okay, probability curves, square and then add, or add and then square. The differences you get between those two. Don't worry about the details of this. A quantum leap is a jump from what is to what can be without going in between, like the cube.
Is this just an optical illusion? Okay. Yes, it is an optical illusion.